a lot of people, especially after I mentioned it on Twitter in no uncertain terms, <clears throat> a lot of people realized that I was not at the Fanboy Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee this past weekend, as I said I would be and as I tried to be. And there was no way on Twitter that we could possibly tell this story. And Brian, you've not even heard this story. Because I saved this because this is one of the goddamnedest now, I'm I'm not saying that this is the worst that anybody's ever been fucked over by a promoter in the wrestling business. It's not even close. I'm not saying this is the worst travel story anybody's ever had in the wrestling business. There have been people that, you know, was was trans, uh, stranded in Zimbabwe or whatever. So this, but this is just the stupidest, the stupidest motherfucker and the stupidest whole situation that I have ever dealt with. Now, and, and before I tell this story, Brian... It, Help me out. Am I a punctual person? Oh, yeah. Oh, I would say very much. As a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, I called you two minutes late on Skype and you were afraid something was wrong and you were going to call the hospital. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe so. Yeah. Usually you're on time. Usually you're prompt. You're very reliable. It's very easy to work with you. I got a, a, a pretty good attention to detail, right? When, when I, I, I ask a lot of questions, I want to I write things down. I want to make sure I'm fully versed in things. Then when, when you start talking about this technical stuff and it makes my head hurt, then I tune it out and just say, well, just do this, <laughs> right? Well, literally, that just <laughs> but, happened, yeah. But details of where I'm going, what I'm doing, I, I tend to get this and get this in advance. Right? Right. So, I know a guy... I used to know him. He don't live in the world that I live in anymore, but I used to know a guy named Tony Hunter. And for the folks who don't know, which is probably most of you, Tony Hunter, a years ago in the Carolinas, he promoted independent shows. I'd worked for him a couple of times then when the, some of the first midnight reunions, when Bobby and Dennis were working over there in, in the Carolinas. And I came in a time or two <clears throat> and, and, I was not aware that he had an incident in 2006 where he went underground for a while where a lot of people needed paid, a lot of people were stranded, whatever the case. I didn't find out about this till on the internet here just a few days ago. But but also, for the past several years, Tony, he, he booked uh, uh, some guys and served as the local promoter for the big-time wrestling events when they would work down in the Carolinas, Spartanburg and Raleigh. <laughs> and I worked there with him. And then also I've seen him a number of times over the past few years, taking guys to the comic conventions. Remember when I said I wanted to stay away from the wrestling shows because the, the promoters were just screwy and I wanted to do the comic cons. <laughs> yeah. The worm has turned. I've got a couple of antidotes uh, about that, but and Tony's been taking people and he would always, whenever I'd see him at one of these shows or whenever I'd happen to talk to him on the phone, he'd say, Oh, Fanboy Expo in Knoxville. What a great show that is. Fanboy Expo in Knoxville. My friend Dave. Me and Dave. Dave runs Fanboy Ex Expo in Knoxville. And me and him, we're just like this. You can see me holding up these two fingers through the microphone, right? <clears throat> he and Dave are just like that. And it's a great show. Corny, I took Sergeant Slaughter or so-and-so, whoever, and we did all these thousands of dollars and had all these thousands of people and everybody. It's, oh, it's just the greatest thing. You ought to come sometime. And I would say to him, well, Tony, here's the thing. Much as I don't go up and knock on the door of people's houses and ask if I can eat dinner with them, I'm sure I'd love this show, but nobody's invited me yet. Tell the guy if he wants to have me come to get in touch with me. <laughs> because here's another thing. I think Tony was fishing around. Well, why don't you bring me in, Tony? But I believe I've also mentioned that I rarely, if ever, and will never again after the last couple of times, use any agents. I always deal with whether it's a wrestling show or a comic con, who's running the show. That's who I deal with. And I don't have anybody come in. And for a lot of guys, it's it's a good deal because the agent pays you a guarantee and he books you at a place. You just go and sign autographs and they keep the money, but they set the prices and they do a bunch of other shit. For me, I don't like that. I don't like people trying to charge forty dollars for a fucking autographed eight by ten. That's just, then what should a fucking three hundred page book be? One hundred and twenty five dollars. The Midnight Express books are more than that, but that's a special case. Um, and also because details get lost with agents, and so normally I don't do that. But, and I have the email right here. November 27th, I confirmed this, of last year with Tony Hunter, because Tony called me, and he said, well, Corny, 
Dave at Fanboy wants to have the Midnight Express reunion because we had just announced the first ones, right? And <clears throat> Dave wants to have the Midnight Express reunion at Fanboy. And that sounded like a good idea because I have a plethora of merchandise. When I go to these conventions, fan fests and everything, but obviously the Midnight Express don't do this full time anymore. So I told Tony Hunter and we made this arrangement. I said, well, you tell Dave, I appreciate the invitation. And what we'll do is you just take the money that you can give to all four of us and you split it up amongst the, the boys, Bobby, Stan, and Dennis. And you give me a booth all three days and I will far exceed the guarantee on what I sell, but it don't have to come out of Dave's pockets. I'll uh, uh, cooperate with the Midnight Express photo ops and et cetera. And we'll all just have a fine time and everybody will come out ahead. <clears throat> all you need to do is cover our hotel while we're in. And, and the midnight only needed to be there on Saturday because I was going to be there all three days, but the midnight, the way they could come in, do the one day and it's easier on everybody. Great deal. Great idea. I'm thinking, well, I'm going to see a bunch of old friends, go to Comic-Con, the Midnight Reunion. Everybody's going to make money. This is going to be wonderful. And I've talked to Tony Hunter a number of times since then. We were even joking about uh, the crook up in Waynesboro, Virginia, Marvin Ward, Doug Ward, whatever, Doug Gibson, whatever <laughs> fucking name he's going under this week. I think he's going under Federal Witness Protection Program <laughs> because <clears throat> Tony was there at the Comic-Con in Louisville when Marvin Ward booked me on that fictitious show he was going to run in Waynesboro with The Undertaker and canceled everything, and he's got every, you know, civic authority looking for him. But anyway, so we've talked a few times earlier this year. Great times are going to be had at Fanboy. And then as it starts getting closer, about a month ago, Tony calls me and says, Dave wants some pictures of the Midnight Express. I said, okay. I said, <clears throat> give me his email address, which he did, and I'll send over those pictures. And I said, Tony, when are we going to get the hotel information? Because I've presented this deal to the midnight. I've booked this for him. I'm taking care of the details. I'm giving them the information. So that way it's easier for everybody, except me. And then, Tony, give me the hotel information when you get it, and uh, and then we'll go over the load-in and all that stuff. I'll send Dave these pictures. So I emailed Dave the pictures. I said, let me know if you get these okay, if they work, or if you need something else, whatever, looking forward to it. Never hear back from, I've, well, people get busy. And then, as everybody knows, we've had all kinds of shit going on over the last couple of weeks, and it's been busy. So normally, if I don't have hotel by at least two weeks out, I'll be on the phone, right? <clears throat> but in this case, I, I dropped the ball on that. And I did not hear from Tony Hunter. And so I called Tony Hunter week before last. It was the 4th of July. And I said, Tony, I'm leaving a week from today to come to Knoxville. What's the hotel information? I got to tell the Midnight Express. Brian, do you know what an exact quote was that he said? No. Corny, if I told you now, I'd have to be making it up. <laughs> what? I said, well, well, don't do that. I said, Tony, I, I said, Stacy's in Oklahoma. Her father's passed away. We got all kinds of shit going on. I've got to leave in the morning, go to Chicago for MLW. It's going to be a 16 hour day on Saturday. It's going to be hard to get a hold of me. I'm going to be right back and I got to pick Stace up. Let's talk on Monday and get me the hotel information and also where <laughs> that, because I'm bringing an entire booth of stuff where that I should go, the load in dock or a, a particular door to load in. I'll be in town on Thursday eve afternoon. Cause normally when you do one of these big comic cons, they send you an orientation email where here's the vendor information. If you're a vendor and load in, you go where you go to get your credentials and your passes, or if you're talent, here's the green room information. Here's a contact. If you have any issues, all the fine comic con like Lexcon do that. I've got nothing. I've never heard from Dave. I don't have Dave's phone number. So I said, Tony, we'll talk on Monday. Get me this information so I can get it out. <clears throat> so Monday comes. And I called Tony Hunter. I said, Tony, what's the information? Well, Dave's going to get it to you. Well, when? Oh, he's real good about that. I said, well, what about the load in, Tony? Where are we going to load in? Well, Dave's going to get you that too. All right. I'll, I'll look for Dave's email, I guess. 
Give me my phone number if you want. Next day, it's Tuesday now. I'm leaving on Thursday. I got nothing. So I emailed Dave at the email address that Tony Hunter's given me. Hi, Dave. Jim Cornette here. Tony Hunter tells me you're the guy that can tell me the hotel information for me and the Midnight Express for Fanboy. I've got to disseminate this information to them. And also, if you could let me know where we load in, loading dock, whatever, get our credentials, I can be in town anytime after 4 o'clock on Thursday. Really looking forward to it. You know what he said to me? No. Nothing, because he never emailed me back. <laughs> to this day, Dave didn't email me back. That afternoon, Tony Hunter calls me. Corny, I got the hotel information. <sighs> Thank God. What is it, Tony? You're at the Four Points Hotel down by the convention center. I said, all right. I said, what's the street address? He said, well, I, I, I don't know. I said, never mind. I'll look it up. I said, four points by the convention center in Knoxville. He got confirmation numbers. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and he gives me a confirmation number for me, a confirmation number for Bobby, and a confirmation number for Stan. And he tells me I've already texted Dennis his because Tony knew Dennis from North Carolina years ago, still had the same number, blah, blah, blah. He said, I've already texted Dennis his. I said, great, that's one less thing I have to do. So I, I said, well, then what about the load-in information? And he said, well, Dave said, <laughs> you're going to hear a lot about Dave coming out. He's, Dave said, don't go to the loading dock. Well, it'll be chaos back there. Just meet, just go to the front of the convention center, and he'll have some guys to help you load in. I said, wait a minute. I said, what? I'm supposed to just pull up in a fucking SUV to the front of the giant convention center. I don't know who any of these people are. I've never seen any of them. What am I supposed to just knock on the door? Hey, help me carry my, I said, why don't you meet me over there, Tony? Okay. And I figured later on we would address some thing where we actually knew where the other was going to be. Right. But I'm going to, going to meet him at the front of the convention center. He's going to help me get my shit in. All right. So I call, uh, emailed Stan, gave him the information, called Doug Markham, the fine referee from uh, Tennessee, because I knew that Bobby was and Doug were going to ride over together. Doug from Nashville, Doug was helping Chad with his Heroes and Legends booth, and they're both going together. And and Doug's going a day early because they're they're doing a setup. So Bobby's right in there. They're getting a room that night, and then they're going to switch over to Bobby's room on Friday. So, Doug, here's the information. Okay, great. We'll see you then. So then, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I, I get all the mail orders filled, and we record the show, and I pack all the merchandise and fold all the T-shirts and load the truck and get all this stuff ready. And, you know, once again, it, it's I've been rushing to do something for the past two weeks. Uh, Stace had just got home. I've been home three days. Now I'm leaving. <clears throat> but I get ready, and Thursday morning I get in the truck. We, it, my travel habits have been popular lately, so let's let's go over this. <laughs> when I get, well, the burger towel was a big hit. Oh yeah. But when I get in my beautiful black beauty, when I get in my truck to leave on a trip, these are my habits. I have a piece of paper in my own handwriting over my visor that has the. Name, address, and confirmation number for my hotel information. The name and address of the building where the show or the meeting or the event or the taping or whatever that I'm going to be working in town is going to be held. The name and phone number of who I'm working for and any other pertinent information. <clears throat> that goes right over the visor. Then I program the address into my built-in GPS in Black Beauty. As a backup, in case I need to uh, adopt a plan B, I have a Rand McNally Road Atlas on the, on the passenger seat to the right-hand side of me. And lastly, I turn on my cell phone after taking it out of the console, plug it in so it's fully charged, and that way, if I need to be contacted or I need to contact somebody, then that can happen. And then I start the truck up, and I pull out, and I'm on the way to Knoxville. And then suddenly my phone dings. Somebody has sent me a text. 
Now, obviously, it's somebody who don't know who the fuck I am or has never met me or they wouldn't text me because I still think that is without doubt the stupidest fucking thing that's ever been invented. You've got a telephone in your hand. You're going to take 10 minutes to type hello with your fucking thumbs. <laughs> and instead of you call a goddamn number and say, hello, here is what you need to know. Or you get a voicemail and you leave a recording. Here is what you need to know. It's a fucking phone, right? <clears throat> but anyway... Somebody sent me a text. Guess who it is? Tony. No, it's Dave. Oh. Because in my emails to him, I'd also sent him my home number and my cell phone number. And I'd also let him know that I would be leaving home on Thursday morning. Therefore, I would be home until Thursday and then I would be on the road. He texts me. And he guess what Dave said to me? <laughs> what did he say? Jim. Call me when you can, Dave. <laughs> he could have just called you. What the, what the fuck, right? <clears throat> so, I've, so I call Dave. I get his voicemail. I'm going to leave him a message. I can't. Voicemail full. Goodbye. What the fuck? So now I drive another 20, 30 minutes down the road. I'll, I'll try him again. Voicemail. Voicemail full. Goodbye. Hangs up on me. So now I call Tony Hunter. Tony, I'm on the way to Knoxville. Dave texted me to call him. It's impossible to call him because he's not answering his phone and his voicemail is full. Is there something I need to know? I don't know, Corny. I'll try to find out. I said, well, I am four hours from Knoxville now because I was just getting out of the outskirts of town. I'm four hours from Knoxville. I'll be checking in between 3.30 and 4 o'clock at the hotel that you have provided me, and we will plan to meet about 6 o'clock to load the stuff in. If Dave needs me, I'm going to be at this phone until I get there, and then I'll call you when I check in. As you can see, I'm very precise about these things. Yeah. So I drive down there, and I get on 75, and there's the goddamn construction, and there's the orange barrels, and there's the deviated lanes. And then suddenly, here comes the thunderstorm. And now there's fucking deluge and goddamn blackness in the middle of the day. And the sun is gone. And you can barely see. And here comes, as I'm coming around these fucking screwy makeshift lanes, I see the standing water on the left-hand side of the road. I'm in the right lane. But in the left lane is a giant 18-wheeler coming past me because he's obviously stupid instead of brave. And he's driving that fast in this weather. And I know what's going to happen when he hits that standing water. So I go all the way over on what re there is of a shoulder on the right. And I tap the brakes kind of slowly because I don't want to spin out, but I slow down as much as possible. <laughs> and this truck hits that goddamn standing water. And for five full seconds, I'm going down the interstate at 35 miles an hour, completely blind, totally underwater, hoping that the lane <laughs> is still the last place I left it in front of me. And I find, and then it stops raining. And then I finally get down there. And I'm think, I'm pulling into good old downtown Knoxville, my old hometown. Boy, I haven't seen this, these parts in a while. Can't wait to get in this hotel room. And, and boy, it's going to be a great weekend. And I pull up to the four point Sheraton there down by the convention center. I can see the world's fair ball, you know, at the uh, signifying downtown Knoxville. And I walk in, I said, hi, I'm checking in for Cornette, please. And the guy looks around and he looks at his thing and he said, what was that? I said, Cornette. He's looking around. He said, uh, can you spell that? I said, with a C. I said, here, as a matter <laughs> of fact, I, I have a confirmation number and I've put the piece of paper right in front of him so he could type it in he's not finding this sir was this for today i say i said fanboy expo maybe it's a group he looks at me like i've got turds hanging out of my mouth i said well, well there's the and I also had eaton and lane's numbers i said they're for eaton and lane maybe they're married they're joined in the he can't find bob eaton he can't find stan lane all these confirmation numbers are fictitious he don't know what the fuck i said i'll be right back so I go back out of the truck. I get the phone. I call Tony Hunter. I get his voicemail. Tony, I'm here at this hotel. They ain't got shit. All this stuff's fictitious. Call me back. 
<laughs> I go back in the hotel. I'm at, maybe the guy is, you know, something has happened where he's miraculously found this and he's got nothing for me. Tony Hunter calls back. I answer the phone. I says, excuse me, sir. I answer, I go back out the front door where I can't hear that fucking lobby music. Tony, what's the deal? And he's in the car or something. He's breaking up, right? Either that or he's doing at the, 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 oh, that thing, right? He said, corny, the other four points. What? I said, the other, four, where is the other four point? And the call drops. So now I'm off. Oh, so this one of these deals where there's two hotels of the same chain and they're near the convention center or whatever. <laughs> That's obviously what's happened. I go back in, walk up to this guy at the desk who now thinks I'm a complete idiot, right? And I said, so I said, I have got the answer to the whole, the solution to the whole problem. I have come to the wrong Sheraton Four Points Hotel. Can you please direct me to the other Four Points Hotel down here? Right. He looks at me like I've got steaming turds. <laughs> He gets his phone. I'm like, already this ain't good. He looks up on his phone. He said, the closest four points is Asheville, North Carolina. That's 100 miles away. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I said, is, is there just another Sheraton? Asheville, North Carolina. I said, I, I didn't even say I'll be right back. Right? I said, <laughs> I... Said, I <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to get more information for the record. How far is Asheville from Knoxville? hundred miles, hundred miles across the mountains. So I go back out in the parking lot and I call Tony Hunter. And this time he answers. I said, Tony, I said, what the fuck is going on here? There ain't no other four points hotel. If the next one's Asheville, North Carolina, I'm standing here in this parking lot. You've given me fictitious fucking hotel information that I had to beg you for every day for the last week and a half. I've yet to actually hear Dave's voice. He's yet to respond to any of my emails. He texts me and tell him, tells me to call him and it's impossible. I really don't have any of this on paper because you never even responded to the email that I sent you saying that this was our deal. I said, I've left my wife sitting home alone after she's just had a death in a family. I've nearly got killed on the interstate. I have driven down here on your say I have told the Midnight Express this was a good deal and given them this information that is obviously fake. And I'm going to tell, and then that's when I came out with, so, and of course it was a lot louder than this, right? And he walked, well, corn, corn, I don't, I don't, I, I, and Dave, and Dave, and it's, it, it, I, and I said, I don't, somebody, you, Dave, or somebody <laughs> in the next 10 minutes needs to call me and tell me where I'm supposed to go or I'm getting in the fucking car and I'm going back home and the clock is ticking and I hung up on him. Now, at first, this was intended to be a motivational tactic. But the more I stood there in that 90 degree parking lot in a hotel hotel parking lot that had never heard of me, I've buried myself now apparently to the Midnight Express. I have let another one of these nitwits because I've been so busy and I didn't I, I didn't fully fucking think I'm trusting another human being to do something right. I'm getting mad at myself. I'm realizing that this has all the earmarks of a fucking shit show and I'm, and I'm starting to vibrate. <laughs> so I decide then that really and truly, if he doesn't call me back in 10 minutes, I'm getting in the car and going home. 10 minutes goes by nothing. I get in the car, started up and I'm pulling out of the hotel and I'm going down the block toward the interstate ramp. The phone rings. It's Tony Hunter. All right, I pull over to the side of this little street, and I'm like, all right, he's going to tell me now where I'm supposed to go, and I'm going to go there, and then I'm going to cuss him out and make him carry all my shit for putting me through all this, right? Yeah. And Zabona, hello. You know what he said to me, Brian? No. Corny, I can't get a hold of Dave, and I just don't know what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> now, bear in mind... 
Tony Hunter the following day is supposed to have Sergeant Slaughter. And he was supposed to have Harley Race, but Harley got sick. And he was supposed to have the Iron Sheik. I don't know what happened to him. And he was, he, he did have, I think, Mick Foley, unless Mick was there on his eye. He had a number of wrestlers coming in the following day to town, including me in the Midnight Express. He couldn't give me a suggestion. He couldn't give me an option. He couldn't enlighten me anything related to this whole fucking fiasco, except he couldn't get a hold of Dave, his bosom buddy and lifelong friend. <laughs> he couldn't get a hold of Dave either. And I said, so you mean to tell me that you just want me to tootle around downtown Knoxville until when or if you can get a hold of Dave, if he does exist, where he can tell me where to fuck, I'll tell y'all where to go right now. And I fucking unleashed on him. And I said, you fucked everybody because you're a fucking moron. And in hindsight, I don't think Tony was trying to be crooked here. He gained nothing. I'm sure he lost. The fans got ripped off. I didn't make any money. I drove 500 miles round trip and back and paid for the gas. Nobody, so he couldn't have been crooked. Tony Hunter, you're just a complete fucking moron. And nobody should trust you if you said your shit stinks. Because you're a liar. So anyway, <laughs> I told Tony Hunter, I said, this is the biggest bunch of shit that I've ever heard in my life. And you have embarrassed me in front of this desk clerk guy. I got to call the Midnight Express and tell them I don't know what the fuck's going on. Hey, you, you can't find fucking Dave. You, you fucked everybody's fucking weekend. Fuck you, Tony. Everybody, my 3.2 million monthly download listeners on podcasting and YouTubing are going to hear that you and whoever this fucking Dave is are fucking morons, and the more I got myself worked up, because now I'm already on the interstate. I ended with saying, I believe if Dave was in front of me, I would assassinate him. And then I hung up. Now I got to call. So I called Doug Markham, because I know he's already at the convention center, because they're setting up, and Bobby's ridden over with him. They've got a room for that night. They're expecting to switch over. They've only rented it for the one night. I said, Doug, this shit's gone sideways. I told him what was going on. He said, all right, I'll pass this on. I said, tell Bobby I'll miss him because Bobby's already there. I knew if Bobby was standing in front of Tony Hunter, he'd get some money out of him some way, right? <laughs> and come to find out as a sidelight, I didn't know this until later on, but eventually somehow Tony Hunter called Doug Markham that night and got a hold of him. And guess what he told Doug Markham? He said, I got the hotel straightened out. Just see Dave. <laughs> And Doug Markham's like, I don't know who fucking Dave is. There's a thousand people in this fucking place. Who the fuck is Dave, right? Although Doug's not that nasty, but, you know, he's, I don't know who Dave is. So they got him in a hotel room, though, on Friday. It was a fucking place called the Knox Hotel or something. And much like the WFIA Fan Fest in 1978 at the beautiful Andrew Johnson Hotel, this place was under renovation. When Bobby and Doug walked into the fucking room, they looked up and there was a huge bubble on the paint in the ceiling and a drip coming through it, where if you'd stuck your finger in it, you could have taken a shower. So the accommodations apparently were lovely once they got them straightened out. But anyway, I digress. I call Doug Markham. I tell him, shit's gone south. I'm headed home. I don't know what you're going to do with the hotel. Find Tony. Then... Before I can call Dennis, Dennis calls me because Tony's got Dennis's phone number. And Tony has called Dennis, begging him to beg me to come back, and he'll make it right. How the, Then when I tell Dennis what Tony didn't tell him, Dennis is like, well, fuck, now I don't know if I want to go. But I said, no, you've had medical bills. Go over there and get your fucking money from that fucking guy. Because we're talking thousands of dollars. I said, go get your money from that fucking guy. Because once again, I knew if Dennis Condry was standing in front of him, he wasn't going to fucking stiff anybody. So then I said, but you know, you tell Tony Hunter, no, the, he had his fucking chance. He's had his chance. I've been rushing and stressed and dealing with bullshit for fucking weeks now, and I ain't going to stand in that fucking parking lot and have him give me the runaround with his little mush fucking mouth. <laughs> then I call Stan. And the first thing when I told Stan, Stan, 
I'm on, I've been to Knoxville. I'm on the way home. He's like, I knew it because he don't like Tony Hunter anyway. And he don't trust him. And so he knew it was too, too good to be true because the payoff was more than the midnight individually gets because it was a big show. And because I said, no, I'll take the fucking booth and you put the blah, 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 whatever. Stan, it was going to bring his wife, Maria. They've already reserved a rental car uh, to make a weekend out of it. They've already reserved a dog sitter. Uh, but as soon as I told Stan that what had happened, he said, fuck it. Because Stan Lane is the only human being that wants to leave his house less than I do, even for money. So he said, fuck it. He started canceling shit. He said, I knew it. I said, Stan, you were right. Because I had to talk Stan into it once he heard Tony Hunter. So then I get another thunderstorm on the way home, right? Oof. And <laughs> have to pull over and sit in a fucking Cracker Barrel parking lot. Wait till that deluge fucking... And finally, I get back home I in eight hours, because it was a lot quicker going back than it was going down there, even with stopping and waiting. Because I didn't even turn the radio on until I got to Lexington. That's 180 miles. I was so fucking mad. I went 500 miles round trip to Knoxville and back to cuss Tony Hunter out. It took me eight fucking hours and 15 minutes. <clears throat> so when I got in the house, immediately I go to Twitter and I tweeted, Hey, everybody, I've been jerked around, lied to, bullshit, and left standing in a parking lot in Knoxville. I will not be at Fanboy Expo. Blame Tony Hunter and a fucking guy named Dave. Well, then that's on Twitter. I've tried to let everybody know, right? It's not like I'm going to get on by commercial time on the local TV news. I'm not going to be there, but I didn't want everybody to be blindsided and go if they weren't already. Come to find out people were traveling from all over the place. And by the way, also Glenn Jacobs was supposed to be there <laughs> at the big wrestling event organized by Tony Hunter, apparently. And he wasn't there. So the fucking guy false advertised the mayor of Knox County in Knoxville. Amazing. But anyway, so I tweet. But then, you know, there's the Facebook. And you know, I don't know how to do the Facebook. Apparently, also, when I tweeted that, people started tweeting. Well, I'm not surprised because Fanboy Expo on their Twitter account still had the dates for the 2018 show and had not tweeted at all since April. <laughs> but somebody said, well, they're primarily on Facebook. Well, I ain't. So I didn't know about these things, right? I'm the only one promoting this fucking thing on Twitter and uh, on the shows here. But apparently somebody, whoever writes their Facebook page, if it indeed is you, Dave, Dave, I'm going to be looking for you, pal. Somebody wrote Jim Cornette canceled for a dumb reason. He went to the wrong hotel, got mad and left. Like I would go to where I thought the rooms were if I had not been specifically instructed. I made a mistake, and then I decided, well, instead of trying to find out or checking with anybody or just doing anything about this, I'll just go home. So that's when I figured out how to put up my first Facebook post. Oh. It, was from Har it was from Harley Quinn's account. <laughs> 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 but later, <laughs> later Stacy... Uh, switched it over and she put up some stuff and also a, a good cult member put up my comment on like every one of the comments or whatever. So it was covered where I said, you crooked motherfuckers, fuck you all. You think I made a 500 mile round trip to cuss out a fucking goof, the lost pile cousin, Gomer, Goober and Tony. Right. And who is fucking Dave and fuck Dave. Cause Dave wasn't there, man. So then I determined that I was not only going to fuck with Tony Hunter, but I was going to fuck with these fanboy expo and whoever this fucking Dave asshole is too. And then one last thing came up. One last thing. I made sure to talk to Dennis because I wanted to make sure he got paid. And he did. I said, Dennis, I said, what in the world did Tony Hunter have to say for himself? for causing all that chaos, for not knowing what the fuck was going on, for just driving me out of fucking town. You know what Dennis said, Brian? No. He said, Corny, he just doesn't know why you're mad at him. <laughs> and then he uttered the <laughs> fatal words, 
Tony told me you cost yourself thousands of dollars <laughs> this week. <laughs> Okay, Dennis, let me, I've got to talk to you later because I need to make a phone call. Now, I'm not a motherfucker who would call someone up and threaten their life on the phone. I'm not someone who would call up and make literally terroristic threats to a motherfucker on his voicemail. But if I was that kind of motherfucker, it would go something like this. You lying motherfucker. You piece of shit moron, you disgusting fucking prick, you got the nerve to tell Dennis Condry that I cost myself all these thousands of, as far as I'm concerned, you motherfucker, you owe me 10,000 fucking dollars, and you will until the day that one of us dies, and I better never see you in fucking person again, is what I would have said had I been saying this on his voicemail, I better never see your fucking rat face in person again. Stay the fuck away from me for the rest of your life or I will run you down in the parking lot, slit your fucking throat, pull your eyeballs out, and skull fuck you, you motherfucker. That's what I would have said. Metaphorically speaking. Metaphorically speaking. And that was... and. <laughs> To this day, Dave has never emailed me. Dave has never called me. I don't know who the fuck Dave is. Dave is supposedly the guy that runs the thing, is all I know, and apparently he's as big of an idiot as his fucking stooge, Tony Hunter. Even Half Pint, old Half Pint even had a critical blog about it, about yeah. Fanboy on the, uh, on, on the interweb there. I saw that. You know, it's interesting with this Tony guy, and you brought up, Doug Ward or Marvin Ward or Doug Gibb, whatever name he uses. You brought up yeah. him earlier. There's an interesting thing with wrestling. I don't know if they, if you see this everywhere else. I don't think you do. Where someone decides, hey, you know, I really want to do something with wrestling. And they get in over their head and they fuck a bunch of wrestlers or wrestling personalities. And you think that's it. They're gone. And then they still like, you know what? Let me try this again. Let yes. me do this shit again. And it happens again. And these guys just, I guess because so many people in wrestling will just do anything for money. They keep jumping in. It's, it's, it's like locusts or cicadas. Every, what is it? Every five, three to five years or five to seven years, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they come back and they get run off again. But, but here's the thing with the comic cons. I've, I've, I've told this story, but it was so long ago. We've got so many new listeners, but that fandom fest here in Louisville about three summers ago, I had been there and done it one time before, and not only did I sell a shitload of comic books, but also merchandise, and I dealt directly with the guy running it, and they had every member of the cast of Walking Dead when it was hot. William Shatner, Gene Simmons, everybody was there. They drew like 40,000 people. A couple years later, go to do it, same people running it. It's going to be at the International Convention Center. The guy books me for it. And then I realize I never hear from him again. And because it's here in town, we didn't need a hotel, right? About four days before the show, we read on Twitter that they have moved the event from the Kentucky International Convention Center to an abandoned Macy's at the Jefferson Mall. <laughs> and 20 of the 25 celebrities have pulled out. And that's how I tweeted, and they know something I don't know, and I'm joining them, right? And that made the local news. It was a shit show here, and everybody was mad. <laughs> and the last time I was supposed to do a comic convention in Knoxville, this guy had seen me at a, at a little show. This was five years ago, I bet. I'd done a little show down in London, Kentucky, just a one-day little sci-fi thing. It was cool. We went and bought some stuff. This guy says, hey, I'm running the Marble City Comic Con. And I lived in East Tennessee for five years. I never knew that Knoxville was Marble City, so he was reaching <laughs> on that one. It, apparently it is, but still. What is that? What does that mean? Because well, I, I, There was some marble construction i don't know the the marble like counters not marbles like you play i don't fucking know anyway he books me for this thing and for that i said look i'll advertise your show and plug it but i need a little guarantee in a booth and oh no problem i never heard from that fucking guy again so the week before the show after i'd emailed and never got a response after i'd called and his voicemail full deal again i announced on my podcast i won't be there this weekend and guess who called me? The guy. No, a friend of his 
Oh. And said, old Joe, I can't remember what this fucking idiot's name was. Old Joe is just, he's just covered up. He's just so, he's just swamped. He's just so busy. I, and, and this was not like a huge fucking event, right? And I was potentially the most well-known name in any field there. And I said, if he's too busy to fucking call me back and tell me that I'm still coming to this thing, he's too busy to pay me and he's in too far over his head and he can do it without me. So tell him he saved that payoff and lose my number. But I'm going to tell you something now for the first time that you don't know about something that happened to me this year. And I didn't want to say this because it was going to reflect badly on a friend of mine. You remember Gabe Yoakum? Yeah, yeah, I remember the name. Gabe Yoakum at C2E2 in Chicago this past March, and he was the, the guy that got me involved in the uh, Keystone Comic Con in Philly last September with that long, giant airplane ramp and the shitty guard and the union and everything. That's right, yeah. <laughs> but Gabe Yoakum worked for, I say this because he has turned in his resignation and left these people for these reasons and is now uh, happier and employed elsewhere. This Reed Exhibitions, Reed Pop, that was running these shows, they're a big company. They do these big shows. C2E2 was a massive show. It was, it, 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 the most I've ever grossed on a Comic-Con and the big VIP thing, this is a big show, right? Big company. You'd think they'd have their shit together. Guess when I got the final b remaining balance of my VIP show money from the C2E2 show in March? You're right. We haven't talked about this. So it was in March. We're in July. I'm going to guess July. You are correct. Two, well, two weeks ago. It may be been June 30th. It might have been maybe the 29th. Since I, I dealt with them for two shows, if Gabe Yoakum had not been there, it wouldn't even have been two shows. It wouldn't have been one complete show. I would have left without Gabe Yoakum, who fixed every fuck up, who took care of every fan that bought a ticket, who took care of me who personally was going around doing everything. The guy thought he was going to have a nervous fucking breakdown, and he's like 6'6 six, six and 330. He's fucking mammoth. And he was carrying shit on his own, and he was doing shit. I mean, he did everything. He, he arranged the food for the VIPs. He did all this stuff, right? Dealing with their office just on two comic conventions, there was a check lost, in quotation marks, that had to be reissued. There were, every check was late and it was late per the terms of their own contracts because we would make a deal. They would execute a contract. I would sign it and then they would violate it. Every check was late. One check was lost. Uh, my VIP was light. You know why? Because they wrote a contract saying that they were going to supply me with hotel and the, the deal on the VIP. And when they sent me my VIP money, they took the hotel out. And violated their own contract. <laughs> and he had to, around dealing with his father passing away in Chicago and a bunch of other personal stuff he had going on, he had to stand over them for weeks until they would recognize their own mistake and send me my money. <clears throat> so, and that, that, and they, so they've lost the only employee that they had that could fucking do anything. So that's the reason I'll never be back at C2E2 again. Wonderful show. Svengoolie's there, great fucking show, great fucking, massive thing. Can't trust them, can't deal with them. In general, because, I mean, you do, I mean, not as much, and especially the rest of the year, you do appearances, you do a lot of appearances some years. What percentage of guys you deal with who are acting as agents or acting as the actual convention promoters, what percentage of them actually pay on time? Well, it, no, it, to be honest... I've never had a, once again, I mentioned my friend Jared Greer runs LexCon, ran the Derby City Comic Con here in Louisville. Uh, you know, always has his shit together. Um, it, it normally, it, the, and I don't do that many Comic Cons because I don't travel the country for them that far, but I've done Louisville, I've done Lexington, I've done Knoxville and Memphis and a few other things. But it, it's it, 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 now the wrestling promoters are outshining the comic convention promoters. Uh, MLW. They have been the wonderful travel lady, Brandy. You know, I make my own travel arrangements as far as transportation because I always drive everywhere. But I have to have a hotel confirmation or I will not leave my house. Most of the time I do my own hotels now because of these problems. But when it's something like this where it's supposed to be included and it's right near the convention center or it's, it's something 
It's a show that's actually in a hotel. Okay, fine. But with MLW, all the hotel reservations and the information has been there. Has been They put us up in some nice joints. Uh, they do their production there also. Um, the, the cars they had for me, the NWA, Dave Lagana, Billy Corgan, those guys treated us like gold, especially in Charlotte. It's the nicest hotel I've ever been in in Charlotte. <clears throat> all the information, you know, up front with everything, the scheduling, WrestleCade on Thanksgiving weekend in Winston-Salem, and I want to plug that. The Midnight Express will be there. Bobby, Stan, and Dennis. I've talked to Tim Blaze. He's the right-hand man of Tracy Myers, and they have done a great job there. I've done it in the past. I've enjoyed it. I'm not, I didn't do it last year. I'm not doing it this year because I've just got past the point in my life where I want to travel on Thanksgiving weekend, and that's the legitimate reason. And Tim understood that and you know, issued the invitation. I changed my mind. But they have a first-class operation there. The hotel's beautiful. All the arrangements worked out. They always have a crowd. It, it You know, it, it, the wrestling promoters suddenly are getting their shit together, and these comic book fucks are falling in a hole. Gary Damron over at All-Star Wrestling, he goes above and beyond to take care, especially the legends. And once again, with him, I do all my hotel and car. It's only four hours down the road, but... He brings in the Midnight or the Rock and Roll or Austin Idol, whoever he's brought in, they're all taken care of. There's never a problem. Nobody's ever standing around. And it, it, I, I am just, I am baffled. As a matter of fact, going to WrestleCade on Thanksgiving weekend, and it was 2014. It was the first year I did it. Because they were going to do a roast of me at the club next to the hotel on Friday, and then the Fan Fest on Saturday and the big super show on Saturday night at that big convention center. They draw 2,000 people. <clears throat> so I decide, instead of driving nine hours first thing Friday morning and getting there and doing the show, I'm going to go halfway just to Knoxville on Thanksgiving night, check in, get a good night's sleep, and be right over to Winston-Salem the next day, you know, fresh and get there early. And thank goodness I did. Because that I get to Knoxville, get off the interstate on Thanksgiving night now, about 8 o'clock. I get off the interstate to get some gas, and my fuel pump goes out. And immediately the car dies. There's no power steering. You can't, you can't do nothing. Now, just the 20 minutes previously, I was doing 70 miles an hour down fucking the mountain, right, toward Knoxville. So it was a good time in a parking lot, but now I'm stranded in a parking lot. And I'm within sight of my hotel. So, to make sure I made that show, I got AAA Premier. They will tow me 200 miles anywhere I want to go for nothing, right? I've got every road coverage in the world. I get a tow truck on Thanksgiving night to tow me to the hotel that I've got reservations for. I get that same tow truck to come back the next morning and tow me to Lance Cunningham Ford in Knoxville, where I leave my truck to get serviced, rent a car, transfer all my shit into that fucking car, and I was still in Winston-Salem and on time for the show that night. On the way back, I drove the rental car back, stayed an extra night in Knoxville, went back, picked up on Monday morning my truck, dropped the rental car off, and finally got home. But I made that fucking show because I promised I would, and they were up front with me, and all their shit checked out. And that's what I told Tony fucking Hunter. I said, you motherfucker, once again, I may, I, t I told him a week and a half beforehand, we just had a death in a family, a lot of shit going on, but I'm going to be there, Tony, because I promised, I've advertised it, people are expecting it, and I ain't going to let you down. Guess which side let who down? So, anyway, there are some good Outlaw Mud Show promoter stories, but there is one person who's not an Outlaw Mud Show promoter, and that is... Marty and the fine folks at T-Mart Promotions behind the gathering in Charlotte in August. <laughs> How's that for a segue? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> because I've already, as a matter of fact, you hear this? I hear this that. is all the information, my schedule, <laughs> the Midnight Express's schedule. All we know where the hotel is. It's the Hilton University place right there where it always is. And it's all here in my hand. And I will be there along with, list these names. And these, these are not even all of them, but Kurt Angle. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Barry Windham, me and the Midnight Express, including Ravishing Randy Rose, Bob Backlund, Sergeant Slaughter, Ron Simmons, Lex Luger, Larry Zabisco, Magnum TA, Bill Dundee's going to be there. 
Ken Patera, Nord the Nord the Barbarian probably ain't going to be there from what I'm reading on the fucking internet today. Why did something um, happen? Check out Nord the Barbarian on the internet. Um, <laughs> okay. Kevin Sullivan, Mark Lorenz is going to be there. John Tatum and Missy Hyatt are going to be together again by popular demand. Where's Tessa? Um, you know, I don't know. But anyway, I mean, Duggan's going to be there. Uh, it, it, it's going to be great. Baron Von Raschke, superstar. So anyway, it's August 15th through the 18th. I will be appearing at the barbecue on the night of the 15th, and we'll be there all day the 16th and 17th for the dealer's room, uh, Midnight Express photo ops, autographs, the banquet on Friday night, be there on Saturday in the dealer's room. Sunday, uh, uh, I'm I'm headed out because we got to get back home. But um, anyway, Charlotte, the gathering, T-Mart, T-MartPromotions.com, not an outlaw mud show. Okay, you got me searching on the internet. I don't see anything about John Nord. What, did, what am I missing? Where did I just, hold on, God damn it. You may have to edit some of this, but I'll find it now. <laughs> You, I'll find this just because I know what I read. I don't have a brain tumor and I'm not goddamn Tony Hunter where I'm just a complete imbecile. Okay. Right here on PW insider. Okay. July 16th, 134 PM. The Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota star <laughs> tribune has just reported that former WWF and AWA star, John Nord, AKA the berserker was sentenced yesterday to five years probation to be placed in restrictive housing and banned from any driving whatsoever. Whoa. Following a series of arrests for driving under the influence, seven in total in recent years. And there was some other things. I believe it's there's 16 incidents in the last decade where he's been charged with either a felony or a misdemeanor. So I'm, I'm thinking he might not be at the gathering, but yeah. don't cancel just because of that, folks. Berserk. It's still going to be fun. He's gone berserk. Well, you motherfucker. <laughs> um, and we, we've got, before we talk about what you're doing this week, anyway, so that, yes, folks, so that is my appearance in Charlotte between now and spring 2020. If there is an MLW or NWA event within 500 miles of Louisville, Kentucky, that they would like my services at, I'm pretty sure we can work that out. Uh, but otherwise, I'm concentrating on our family affairs. It's going to necessitate some trips out of town. And you and I have our project, that was our secret project, that we're supposed to have been doing for years. And I've got a bunch of other stuff that I can do at home and not have to deal with having a nervous breakdown every time I leave the house dealing with these fucking people. And big and small, apparently, companies, it makes no difference. 